Hey everybody, welcome. Hi. Free love. Hey, good evening, everybody. Let me grab my coffee. How are you? Yeah. Nice to see you're in. Uh, oh, I'm getting my set. I'm getting my daily sun. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, this is like the the very little time I've had to get sun today. And welcome, everybody. Yes, this is the cooking show. I'm bringing it back again. Last week we took a hiatus and I made a, a cheese sandwich and some potato chips. Yep. But today, uh, David Sponheim, me, the American original. Yeah, we're just making sure we have all the settings right here. Hang on. Oh, I'm at a real tech mic. Okay. We're going to a better mic. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Okay, I'm going to get my chat rooms open right now. That's important. And I'm getting my sunlight, so let me get my coffee and my sunlight right now. You gotta build your vitamin D level, and getting sunlight is the best way. If you get a chance, do it. Hello. Okay, we're gonna get into the Vaughn chat room right now. All right. Looks like a little uh, fruit enzyme time. Hiya. We are running our other show at DLive, in case you're wondering. Yep. This is $1 for two meals. This is a how to do it, okay? Welcome to the show. Yeah. Now, what do you what do you start with first, right? Well, uh, that's a big question. Yeah, what do you have in the cupboard? Do you have anything in the cupboard at all? What I like to buy whenever I'm at a store is I get corn grits. And I went to a store in 1998. I remember I actually went to the store and I got corn grits from from Winco. And I was with Sarah. And we, we, this is like a long time ago. I'm down to like this much corn grits here. I think I've got another bin in the, the cupboard, but yeah. Now this has got to be the most portable food you could work with and store forever, corn grits. But be sure you get non-GMO. Yeah, because I bought it before GMOs came into existence. By the way, we got a special treat. The device is not, but what happened to the device? That's weird. Little connection problem. Whoa. Huh. Vice is out for some reason. Let me see what's going on here. We'll troubleshoot this the fly. This is technology day after all. Let's take a look. See if that makes any difference. I need to get my... I just won't touch that camera, I think. I've got everything I need right there. Pull it back a little bit. Oh, see? Wow. That looks like a wire problem, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like the wire broke on that camera. Let me see if I can bring it back. That is weird. Okay, so folks, I'm gonna start with the corn grits and what I'm gonna do is get a, an onion going. And I believe I have an onion in the back in my refrigerator here, let me see. A little, uh, little uh, savings tip for a lot of you. Online, you can buy a, a refrigerator light for your refrigerator that's made with an LED. 
And I did that with this. I, I had two sockets that were burning 40 watts each, like 80 watts every time I opened the refrigerator. You would not believe the savings I, I had doing that. Yeah, it's, it was crazy. I saved like 30 to 40 bucks a month with an LED light in my refrigerator. That's how much electricity is drained whenever your 40 watt, your 240 watts go on and off. So I just put one LED in there, it's like seven watts, and it works great. So you can save 35 bucks a month, that's like 500 bucks a year on your electric bill. Seriously. Okay, let me go off camera for a second and go ahead and get into the iBlog room. Okay, I'm back. This light is really good. I'm really getting it. Yeah, this is the vitamin D I needed to build. Yeah, so uh, be sure you get some indirect sunlight if you're a, a shut-in. Very important. Hey, you iBloggers and you guys at Periscope, thanks for coming in. You know, it's going to start with grits, okay, KY? KY wanted to know what we're going to make for dinner. Okay. I think Sweden, the, I would go with the Sweden model. It's the most sustainable model. And I, I really admire the Swedish people in doing this right now, keeping their country going. Brilliant, actually. We've got an idiot for a president. I never would have shut our country down, folks. I want you to know that that was never my decision. I said to block all incoming planes into our country 12 weeks ago. He literally is still allowing them into our country. I'm not kidding. Go to flightradar24.com and check yourself. Okay, at some point, um, once I get this going, today we pulled out our storage of walnuts. We had a bag of walnuts. We're going to use some of these today for our banana bread. This is going to be a big show, so hang in there. Yeah, it's going to be, a, I'm going to start with a $1 deal. Okay. Okay, you're going to need an egg. Yeah, corn grits and an egg. Okay. And you're going to need a can of Vienna sausages. Now these are selling for fifty dollars, fifty cents a piece, right now. And if you go to dollar stores, you can typically find them for about fifty cents a piece. I think my dollar store went up to fifty-eight cents, but I got these for fifty cents a piece. And this is the kind of food you can always cook with, and I really strongly recommend it. No, Vienna sausages are really the—it's like the the Cadillac of all processed meats, and I'll tell you why. Sarah. She won't even eat a hot dog. She won't eat a sausage, but she'll eat these because she really believes that the, the quality tastes better. Now she's a she's a connoisseur. She's a connoisseur of Vienna sausages, okay? So let's just take a look at this. This can right here you can pop open. And this can is over 10 years old. And it looks just like it would normally if you were like to open it any day. The perfect combination of ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it out. Pop it right there. Now, if you're a little worried about the top, you can just rub it with your fingers. It's perfectly fine. Leave that there. We're going to take your onion. And I use it. No, oh, there we go again. Hang on, we're having some device problems here. 
It's either a bad jack or a... I think it's a bad jack. Or a, it's actually the, the wiring. Hang on. I just won't move the camera. Which will make the show almost impossible, but that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't even recognize it. Okay, we're bringing it back. Hang on. There we go again. Okay, I just won't touch the wire. Very, very temperamental. Okay, so, so far, let me show you, uh, give you a review of the ingredients, okay? An onion, a half an onion, which is no more than maybe uh, 20 cents. An egg, no more than 20 cents. This 50 cents, and believe it or not, these grits are like 10 cents. Yeah, COVID does not like hot air very much. There's a, I think that's an eyelash or something. It's really bugging me. Yeah. No, it's still there. I think we got it under control now. I don't know. It's just like an eyelash or something. I don't need a USB extender right now, but thank you. No, Vienna sausage is not made with German squirrel and forest raccoons. It's made with forest squirrel and German raccoons. That's real meat. No, it's no. The meat industry is actually a very strong uh, recycler. Everything that's natural, or organic, goes into these uh, Vienna sausages, uh, like eyeballs and yeah, testicles. Oh yeah. Are you saying you'd rather starve? Okay, we got the group over here at iVlog who would rather starve. Oh, okay, great. Congratulations. Cheers, you'll be uh, starving to death. Uh, I don't know. I think it's the Cadillac, and I think I'm done with my son. There we go. I think it's the Cadillac of, of processed meat myself, and I, I wouldn't have even thought of this idea if it wasn't important to me. Okay, we got a lot of stuff to do. We've only got, what, two hours to do it in? An hour and 42 minutes? Okay. Could we stop ragging on the meat right now and, and just move on? Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay, this beautiful organic onion, which I purchased no more than 20 cents it cost me. I'm using half of it, so I still have a room, a little bit of room in the budget for the corn grits, which are very cheap. You usually get them for about 60 cents a pound. But be sure you get non-GMO. Okay, you want to use as much of that onion as you can. We're going to get a small burner going in the front. Take it up to level three, and we're going to dice that onion. We won't be cooking with the eggshells today. So I have an alternate use of the eggshells. I'm, I'm thinking maybe you might want to just, you know, crush them up and use them to clean your teeth. Like, 
Look, if you use hot dogs, I don't care. This is about survival, okay? Now, you can't buy a package of hot dogs for 50 cents. David, my hair it needs to be cut. And my barber is closed indefinitely. What do I do? Answer is, you cut your own hair, stupid. There's a thing I learned in studying instruments, a thing called a scissors. And you take the scissors very carefully and you hold your head up like this and you go like that. And you do that until your hair is cut. What is wrong with you? Learn to cut your own hair. I've been cutting my own hair since 1983 and I've saved over $10,000. This is the hair antidote that I tell you about. Yeah, same with you, Medverall. Get a pair of scissors, guys. Just make sure it's sharp. Otherwise, you get the frizzies. Okay. Now, you can use a little bit of spray olive oil. I highly recommend it because it's good for you. And gosh, I'm almost out. Gee whiz, a curse. I'll have to fill it up again, assuming we have food. Okay, I bought some non-GMO avocado olive oil at Ross for Less. Yeah, that cool. That's what I'll fill it up with. Avocado sunflower might be perfect. Yeah, high in omega-3. Okay, we're to throw the onions on the plate. Take those sausages and cut them right up. Slice them right down pretty even, about a quarter of an inch in size. All right. Now comes the secret ingredients. We can try Meow's bacon seasoning today. We'll put a little cumin in there, a little turmeric, a little Italian seasoning, a little Patty LaBelle's curry, no salt, if you have to use dried onion powder, go for it, you know, feel free. Another thing you can use is minced onions. You can rehydrate these if you don't have any onions in the cupboard. Now if you use the minced onions, you gotta set them in water for about 15 minutes, hot water. You rehydrate them. That way you can carry a, a can of Vienna sausages, some grits, uh, uh, some diced onions or whatever, minced onions, and uh, some water and you're on the road with a little cook stove you're good to go. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and put some of that stuff on there. That's turmeric. We'll put some of your Meow TV seasoning on this. I mean, pork is pork, right? Now, if you are cooking with turkey as an alternative, and because you're Muslim or uh, Jewish, that's perfectly understandable. A little cumin, a little Italian seasoning, there you go, that's quite a bit, but that's enough. And some of Paddle de Bell. Paddle de Bell is giving a little, little spice. Check this out. Okay, take that like that. Put a little water in there. Keep it at level three. Okay. You want to get cook it up a little bit. We want to get those uh, herbs a little moistened. In a little while, we'll bring Sarah in. We'll start making our banana bread. 
Now today I picked up, I went to my, my library and I pulled out the renowned book Beard on Bread. Yeah, isn't that amazing? James Beard. Beard on Bread, wow. The consummate, shape, the greatest book ever written on bread. Beard on Bread. This is a collector's item. I don't mean to brag, but I happen to own it. Anyway, we're, uh, we're looking at banana bread today, so I think we got it bookmarked, if I'm not mistaken. Whole wheat nut bread. Well, let me just try the old index. What do you say? The man was a genius. Beard, James Beard. I don't, I don't know if he's still alive, but I'm David. Yeah, I'm cooking. Yeah. If you want to watch the regular show, it's just it's somebody in the government talking at D Live. Yeah, I've got CoolRock.com if they want real good stuff. I should go in there and tell them that. When Sarah comes in, I'll, I'll direct people over to CoolRock. There we go. 170. We got it. Oh, I did have it bookmarked. This was my, my wishing you a white Christmas. Wishing you a white Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Two cups sifted all-purpose flour, one teaspoon baking soda. Okay, we'll get to all that. I've got a lot of bananas i got to eat up a little bit later. I'm still steam frying right now at level three. Yeah, I got some bananas. They're still really good, but they're perfect. You see how ripened they are? Organic bananas. Yeah, organic bananas. We're going to go ahead and use those today in this recipe. It is a cut coat knife. You are right. You are correct, sir. All right, we're getting that going. Now I'm going to take a about a half a cup of corn grits to about a, a to about a three quarters of a cup of water so got my cup measure here I'm gonna go into my corn grit bag pull out my corn grits from 1998 that I bought at Winco with Sarah got a half of a container of corn grits there You give that other food a little bit of a shake, like that. Kind of get everything mixed up. And pour the grits right on top. Okay. And then fill this up with a, about three quarters of a cup of water. Like right about to there. And then take that and pour that water right on top of that mix. Okay, just let it set for a little while. Kind of mix it up a little bit. Not too much. There you go. Now there, you could also do something that would really be beneficial at this point, which is to put other things from the garden in this dish. Yeah, like uh, parsley. I've got parsley that grows outside. I can go get some. Parsley is a really good diuretic, and it's a really good vitamin A source, too. Whatever you're making, it actually smells good. Well, because I'm cooking with Vienna sausages. I don't know if that's true. I'm not sure I like Vienna sausages cooked. Well, she There's likes Vienna sausages. She doesn't like them cooked, though. Okay. There's something else that you're making that I like. It isn't kosher, no. But it could be if you had turkey sausages. Okay, TerraVision, what do you got? I'll play it later. It lights up really nice. Jose Lugo says these tall. You got like yeah sirens in in New York. I saw those. Okay. 
It's like a dystopian nightmare out there with Trump making the worst decision on earth to shut down the country. That's my opinion. You can disagree. But when the end of the six weeks is up, if we're not in uh, full-scale civil unrest, I'll be surprised. Because food is running out in some parts of the country right now. Right now. Oh, is this your um, Vienna sausage egg thing? Yeah, I'll make it later for myself. It smells good. I think it's the turmeric or something he used, but yeah, it smells good. Everything's kind of rehydrating right now. It looks different. No, it's, it's got to rehydrate. It's going to cook. Drop everything to a low, like a very small flame, and let it sit. I'll get back to that, and I'll firm it up, and I'll make the whole thing into a frittata. If they had smell-o-vision, they'd like, um, enjoy oh, yeah. it way well. They could. smell vision I'm going to go ahead and get some parsley outside. So, okay. welcome. This is Sarah. She's going to be working on the uh, oh. banana bread. I am. Huh. Now that that I want to mention it is a very temperamental uh, thing. So I'm going to give you this whole area right now. I'm done with it. I don't even know. You were the one that always made banana bread. Well, I'm going to make it. Yeah, I'm going to make it. But you, you can, can tell me what you. Did. Oh, this is what you did. Yeah, I used James Beard the. Beard on bread. Wait, I gave, which one would you use? This one or this one? Uh, the banana nut bread is the one I'm going to use. This one. Okay. Because we're going to use uh, walnuts in this banana bread. Half a stick, a quarter cup of butter. David used to use a lot more, um, not a lot more butter, but he used to, he used to make a much bigger recipe. I would say. Well, we're going to do four. Uh, we're going to do uh, four loaves at least, or maybe six. How many we can fit this into? Okay, so how many bananas is that? She's going to do the numbers for you. That's what it. This calls for one and a half cups of mashed bananas. That's one recipe. And that so we'll looks do, like I think everything there will be one. The, no, enough. this is way more. This is double. Okay, so the double the re double that this recipe. This is actually three times as much. Yeah, triple the recipe then. Okay, triple the recipe. I'll bring out my one and a half sticks of butter. It was like, yeah, right. Uh, we'll use we'll use some oil instead. No, we we'll use butter and oil. I got I got both. I have got really good butter. Will your banana bread be organic? Pretty close. It yeah. is organic bananas. The wheat is non-GMO. We can tell you that, but it's not organic. It's just some all-purpose flour we bought in 1999. Old flour. So maybe before there was pesticides. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. They didn't start genetically modifying wheat at that time. Um. They, I'm not handling multiple classes like 200 kids per course. I am going to be doing some distance learning, but not until the 13th. Um, I'm calling families right now. That's why I was coming in later than David started his show, because I'm making sure that families have um, devices and internet capability. Some basic kids classes have like a thousand plus kids online. Why? Like, that's not how we normally teach. So what are the teachers that normally teach those kids doing? There's no, like, wait, yes. I mean, there, no, not even a, no. I was in a class today as a student, because it's like some professional development. There's like 300 people in that session, but there shouldn't have, like, I don't understand. A thousand kids? Kids? No. <sighs> Good. Victory for Cake is teaching kids online about geology. We all know he's a big geology fan, so he's doing his part. Good. All right. Half a stick, a quarter cup of butter. Let's see what we have with that. Well, what does it say? It has, and then it has a half a cup of granulated sugar or one and a half cups of granulated sugar and then honey as well eggs hopefully he has more than just like one egg because it calls for two eggs and then we're tripling the recipe so i need like six eggs yeah i could see that i mean i mean i could see college classes being a thousand people but not young young students and then um, baking soda, salt, and nuts. All right. 
Cream the butter with a wooden spoon. Add the sugar and honey and beat until creamy and light. Today you got to, you got tired to teach the kids about how rocks are formed very basically. You also did dinosaur lessons. You know, there's this really cool uh, lesson that they did to teach kids about rock formations with, you can do with crayons and a, you get at least two different colored crayons and a, and a uh, butter knife. It can even be a plastic butter knife and you shave the crayons, one color and then another color onto a slip of a, and you need a piece of aluminum foil. So you shave each of those and as you're doing it, you talk about how that's like sediment. This came from uh, Building Blocks of Science, by the way have to give them credit. And then you shave the other color and see it's like a different color sediment. And if you push those a little bit together, it's sedimentary rock. And so it forms layers. And then what you do is you take that foil and kind of make it into a boat and pour some hot water in a bowl and like let that float a little bit so it's kind of a little bit the shiny and melty. And then you press it together because metamorphic rock forms from heat and pressure. So you press it together in your hands and then you open it back up and you can still see the different colors, but now they're like shiny and that's metamorphic rock. And then you take that same one with the same and make it into a boat. But then you add some, put it in even hotter water until the crayons like melt together in one color. And then that's how it is igneous rock. Okay, when you get everything kind of uh, positioned in there, what you want to do is nest it all together like this. Is that grits? It is. It's grits and it's, I'm just bringing it up off the bottom so it doesn't stick. I, I pulled it out right at the right time and I turned the temperature down at the right time. So just kind of mix the, the parsley in there so it has color. And parsley won't take long in hot, so parsley is akin to the egg idea. So what we'll do is... And do we still have six eggs for the banana bread? Yes, I do. Let me check. Because I would eat that without the egg. Oh yeah. But. I would gladly put this in a side dish for you if you'd like. I would almost eat it without the egg. Okay, let's pass on the egg, everybody. And we're going to make this uh, banana bread with five eggs. Okay. And I'm just going to put a little butter in there and then close it down. And, and butter we'll and maybe and cheese. And Parmesan. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. Okay. Okay, right here, you're looking at... Thank you some butter out of the butter container, which I think we can factor that in now. Take, a, take some butter and put it in there, enough to get the taste up, because butter is a really good thing with grits, isn't it, honey? Yeah, butter yeah. and cheese is great. Butter and cheese, yep. And so butter is the kind of thing that lasts a long time, and, the, and that's one of the reasons why people have been cooking with it for, for a long, long time. Okay. Okay, put a little butter in there. Top it off with Parmesan. A little bit more water on it. You can always gauge how, how moist it is. I'm just gonna put a little water on it so it doesn't stick and then let it sit on the stove on the warm for a little longer and let it set for a bit. Now Sarah's gonna start the banana bread but I'm gonna come back and kind of stir that up and maybe taste it. How much butter do you think? It says half a stick of butter, a quarter cup. I would say at least that much right there. Okay. So Opening up. Or, well, that's for one recipe if we're tripling. Right, but we're going to add uh, some of this, uh, this 
non-GMO avocado oil. I think we can okay. open that up. We'll save the uh, olive oil for later because I don't want to take up all the olive oil in case we don't resupply. Yeah. We're kind of hunkering down and we don't want to take all our supplies yeah, up, you know. But I'm going to cut this off for you for the, the dish. And well, shall I put it in a little white thing? Well, here, you can just put it right here. But um, Okay, whatever you want. Bring like it on that. over. I was going to defrost it, maybe. Um, on the stove, yeah. Or wherever. I can't do the microwave. Oh, right. So that can sit on the stove when this is over. In fact, I can pretty much move that around and and get that over right now. Okay. Let's finish up this dish right now. Basically, you shore up the sides like this, making sure they're nice and, uh, and clean. And you've got yourself dinner for two, maybe even three. And it's very tasty. I'll have it later, but I'm just going to let that sit on the side while she wants to defrost this. So You can I'll cut your own hair. Have you ever considered getting one of those shavers? You can get a longer extension. Something like that. Well, I just told them to get it, use a scissor. Or you can be like David and use scissors. All right. Good. So it asks to Yummy. take the butter. I just had a bite of that. It's really good. And the sugar. And the honey. And we're going to cream it all together. We do have honey right here. Yep. We might as well use some of this. We'll, we'll take the top out and let it pour out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got some old fashioned honey, local. It's a, a cup of honey. So. We're getting some sugar too. And baking soda. Yeah. Calls for baking soda. Does it call for baking powder too? I didn't see baking powder. Okay. Got my honey going. Maybe. Oh, look at these milks that we had here. I know, they're kind of weird. Oh, we gotta eat these up. Yeah, you do. Let's open them to 2% today. Okay. And put this you in can there. see how it is. Oh, that milk, that's good. This is the milk, not that older stuff. That other stuff. That other stuff. Well, no, this is, this is dried milk from, actually, this is ultra pasteurized, no artificial hormone milk. It's three years old in a box. Hey, good evening, Anderson Cooper. How are we'll you? We'll see if this is edible. Oh my God. This has been in a box for three years. No, seriously. And you can still buy these containers at the dollar store for a dollar. The ones that you buy at the dollar store will be a lot fresher. They won't. Be yeah, they're new. Old. These are really old. These are from my old storage. So we're going to open this up and see if it's still good and use it in the banana bread. Yeah. And the honey is definitely like one thing you can do with honey like this is you can supposedly like add water and heat it up or just heat it up. But I know how you guys feel about microwaving. You're like, why are you microwaving? That doesn't make any sense. It sounds like I got a message from my family. Okay. That's looking good. I might put the butter in here. And put this whole thing on top of the stove. And close up my honey. And get some sugar in here. We'll cream it all together. Cream it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Did it, did it come out? Uh, so far, I mean, did the honey come out? Uh, kind of. 
Okay. I'm looking for some backup sugar here for us. Okay. Yeah, look at all the, you know, I just discovered we have all of this too from that first purchase that we made in 1998 of, at Winco. So look at all the corn grits we have here. We've got grits. Isn't that amazing? So, we I mean, we won't have a, a need we to. We have grits and um, oatmeal. Yeah. We don't need to go anywhere. No. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we don't. I have some uh, brown sugar. Want to try that? Uh, sure. That'd be kind of good. That'd be a flavorsome banana bread. Brown sugar always adds some flavor to a banana bread. Yeah, we, Sarah and I met each other in 1998, and what, one of the first things we did was went to Winco on our way up to this area from where she lived in Northern California. And we bought, bought some toilet paper then, too. Yep, yeah, we bought toilet paper then, too. But we don't have any of that left. No, that's all gone. But we, we shopped for, I remember getting the corn grits back then, it was like 49 cents a pound. The like, grits are good. Good evening, Phil. And then I didn't really eat them. That's something about me. I don't always eat things. You've never seen honey like that? That's all natural honey, yeah. Uh, 169 asked me if I'd nuke the Chinese wet markets. Uh, well, something Trump didn't do is he didn't set up a tariff that had any meat to it. I had, remember, I'm the guy who came up with the tariffs on China back in 2009, I believe. I suggested that we put an ecological tariff on China. And Trump doesn't like the idea of tariffs. He didn't tie it to anything. And my ecological tariff would have been tied to all kinds of human rights and animal rights issues, as well as environmental conditions. Trump never did that, not even with the treaty that China signed recently, which was a joke. So Ch Trump never used any of this trade agreement and the tariffs to champion the rights of animals and people. Let's put people first and then animals. Okay, thank you. Because there are people being uh, tortured in China. Okay, so, sorry, keep going. They you are being tortured. Oh, sorry. They are being tortured in China. And this is a, an ongoing thing. The Falun Gong people have Anybody who's a, a dissident gets hauled away and they, they harvest their organs. Yeah, I didn't want to bring this up on, on our show, but... But of course I am, because I'm going to talk about this all the time. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> That's just who he is. You want me to peel the uh, bananas and put them in a mask? Sure, bag? that would be awesome. Okay. You know what I want to do what? when I do eggs? I like to always do the egg whites separately, even if the recipe doesn't call for it. It just wow. makes everything so much fluffier. I don't think you need to worry about a banana bread and fluffy. Is things, are things good when they're fluffy? Yes, they are. Well, you do it any way you want. You are the master baker here. You have the best baking ability I've ever seen. So I, that's why I let Sarah take over on this particular Lowered day. expectations. No, no, I mean it. Okay, I'm going to pull these bananas out of here and drop them in. Okay, this is looking good. One banana down. We bought a little too many bananas the other day, thinking we'd have enough. Thinking, oh, we can store bananas, because we eat a lot of bananas. We eat a banana every day for breakfast. The problem with that is that bananas... They go bad. They yeah. go bad. You notice how when I peel it, I don't touch the interior of the banana? I just drop it right into the slot? That's what makes bananas a perfect place for a coronavirus outbreak. Yeah, it's in, grown internally. You know, I used to study uh, pesticides and organophosphates and environmental science when I was a young man. And I found out that uh, most pesticides do not grow inside of the banana. Even though these are organic and they don't use pesticides, you never know. Oh, I should have that there's a very little banana. systemic pesticides in bananas, the way they grow. I have you, you could do that here. I'm almost done. 
Well, it's going to help you do something for me. Well, i got to put this away in the compost real quick. Okay. I'll just direct it. No, I, I, I'm prepared for the compost heap. I made it available so I'd have it around. Okay, I'm going to rinse my hands off now. You're touching compost. And you never know. The bananas may say organic, but they could have pesticides on them. So always never touch the outside and then touch the inside of a banana. Here, what do you need? Or other things besides pesticides. Uh, what I need is for you to crack all the eggs. Okay. And put the egg, well, if you crack them all, I can put the egg whites, but you can okay. put the egg whites in there. All right. I'm going to use five eggs today, not six. They're big, though. Okay, so we're going to drop those in there. this into that sugar mix. Oh, here, okay. But I just, I'm leaving the egg whites behind. Okay. Okay. I can do that. That's it. I'll take care of it. Okay, I was just going to pour some of this in here. Okay. Could I fill this up? Yeah. Go ahead and put some in here. Yeah. It's some nice oil. It's good right there. So nice and clear. Yeah. Course. Okay. Clean sunflower and avocado oil. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah. So you're, you're basically taking that out of there. Oops, yeah, I'm taking I broke the, the white. Oh, yeah, here, you do that part. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Hang on. I've got a contamination here, going on. I got on. it. Thank you. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Here. I am currently, yeah. unfortunately. Okay. Let me cut. Let, let, you handle that portion, okay? Yeah. Because that takes a little bit you more wanna, delicate touch. You want to use another knife? No, I'm good. One of the reasons why I make banana bread is is because I don't do all this. And it's just like throw it all together. But I, I don't mind if you want to do it. It's fine. Yeah, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Well, the reason I like to bake is I like taking my time oh. and that's fine. It takes a slow hand. I like to like just relax. Well, I, I want to get this done because like I got four other things to do. You wanted me to break eggs, I'm breaking them. There you go. Thank you. I can break them, but you've got your four other things to do. No, I'm just finishing up here. I want to mash the bananas for you. Okay. No big deal. And that's the... Okay, and one more. Okay, here we go. Okay, thank you. And I will compost those eggshells. Great. All right, thank you. Now I will just get out of your face for a while and then do this. Okay. I'll put this off to the side. It's not nice. practically could make a vaccine with something, but unfortunately a vaccine won't work with this. Is David a robot? 
That's ridiculous. Why do you keep saying that? No, there is no reason a vaccine would work when the recombinant RNA gene is constantly mutating. Anyone talking about a vaccine is either a fool or part of Donald Trump's administration, or both. Yeah, those two aren't mutually exclusive. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I I think I've got the potato masher somewhere down there. I'm going to grab it. Okay. There it is. All righty. Did it have it in a separate container? Sometimes it does that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go uh, just kind of like get the mash going here, so you can see me over here, guys. Oh, device not available. What happened? Oh, I moved it. I'll take care of it. It's the wiring. There it is. Oh, I moved it. No, anytime the wiring moves, it, it's all screwed up. We're gonna have to get a here. new camera. I'm gonna move this out of here, and then you can move that over there, and then you can. Do that. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the the dirt on this. You can, yeah, and underneath oh. all, all this all that egg white. That egg white spills. I know. That's just the way that it happens. Wait a second, what's that's all egg white? Yeah, but I'm just gonna clean it up. Well we're gonna be short on eggs now. What up? What up? Wow. Okay. Well, you know, that's why I never break those things up. That's just my rationale. I understand your rationale. Okay. Okay, now you touch the sponge. Now that, that means that it has to be put in the ground and you need to rinse your hands off. No, the sponge is, there's nothing more contaminated than that sponge. Got it. If you want, no, so just drop it down in the ground. There you go. There's nothing more contaminated than that sponge in the kitchen or that washcloth, so, all right. Yeah. You don't want these stringy things in there. That's not good. Do you want me to bash the bananas? Well, you do whatever you want. I I'll mean, just back away. I'm fine. You're, I mean, you're. I thought you were better at. No, I'm gonna let you handle the show for a while. Okay. I'm just doing things slowly, because that's how I do things. David's very fast paced, and I'm really slow paced. But I still get things done. But I feel like I'm like the tortoise, you know. And the tortoise and the hare, just slow and steady and. looking pretty good as far as the mashing goes. Yep, the bananas are mashed now. Okay, now this will help more than, okay. Then cream, add sugar, honey, beat until creamy and light, add eggs, then thoroughly mix in the bananas, sift the flour, soda, and salt together. And then finally fold in the nuts, except I'm going to change the recipe a little bit. And I'm going to do egg whites right before I fold in the nuts. Um, there we go. Because I like to... I don't know. Different people are different, Craigie Beans. I don't know about that. So I already did sugar and honey. And does seem kind of light. Eggs are pretty good. And then mix in the bananas. Now this is, seems like a lot more than one and a, you know, that's a lot of bananas. But. Well, I like a lot of bananas in my banana bread, especially considering it's such an important meal for the breakfast hour. Yeah, gotcha. Now, banana bread is perfect for breakfast, a slice of that, but don't eat more than one slice a day, or yeah, you, you will gain weight. Yeah, about all the bananas that you put in here. Yeah. Like that's like eating all those bananas. Well, we have to eat them because you bought them. So. I know. I'm not. Never okay. Mind. I'm saying you wouldn't want to eat it all at once. Right. That's true. That's all I'm saying. 
Yeah, so the Fed Reserve took the masks, then they jacked the price up at healthcare and pharmaceutical industries. The hoarder ended up keeping all his masks and bragging about it, so they went into his house and grabbed it. Yeah, there's one way to gain weight, and that's banana bread. I was When my father was uh, really sick, I was eating a loaf a day, and I gained 45 pounds, just dealing with the stress. I would come in and have a slice of banana bread every uh, three hours. The uh, amount of stress I went under was unbelievable. I'm sorry you had to deal with all that. Well, somebody had to. So I, I took on a lot of responsibility when my father passed away. And it was like a full year there that was just super stressful. And uh, Sarah and I were together for, uh, you know, a year and a half before things started getting really bad for my mother and father. And... Uh, and it was really amazing. They were get, the banana bread helped me get through it. It was like a comfort food. Yeah, especially food. they didn't have, you know, things weren't legal back then. Yeah, marijuana wasn't legal back then. True. Okay, I'll let you so get back to your didn't meditative have any of that, So yeah, they have banana bread instead. Yeah, banana bread is better than marijuana, except you gain weight. Okay, so now I'm going to do something kind of interesting, which is a little bit different. That's just the way. I'll do that later. No, you're done. I'm out of here. I just had to taste some of this food. Oh, absolutely. It just looks so good. I want to try it. Uh, one and a half cups all-purpose flour. So now I'm going to get the measuring cup and use flour. Okay, I'll get that. Yes, true. Right over here. Right in front of you. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any milk in here. There's no milk in that recipe. Hmm. Maybe there is in the other recipe. Yeah, one one third a cup of milk. Should I add some milk? No, not that, that milk. Um, oh, how about no? How about no? The first recipe doesn't help. It. I'd like you to add a little milk for moisture. Well, it's pretty moist with the bananas. Okay. We'll see. I need no um, milk. That's good. Wow. This is really good. Mm. The thing about grits is it has a consistency of of couscous or Quinoa, you know? Mmm. I'm eating grits, not smart dust. Three. Mm, really good. Yeah. The parsley made it pop. Oh, good. Yeah. Or. Mm -mm. No, we're not going to add Roundup to it or Smart Dust. <laughs> but we are going to add okay. baking soda. Okay. Four and a half. You want me to run the fan for you? Mm, no, it's not necessary. It's a little too dusty, you tell me. It's not that bad. Okay. Okay, and then baking soda and some salt. You want a teaspoon? Yeah, well, I got an actual teaspoon. Yeah, I got a dry, a dry teaspoon. It has. Is this soda? Yeah. One. This is one half, so really one and a half. That's a good salt. Yeah. 
That's got potassium in it. It's good for us. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? We're cooking on the Vaughn live stream and Periscope and iVlog, and we've got the other stream, D Live, which you can go to at Cool Rock and click the top Corona News button. You can watch the regular show, which includes Corona News and information, alternative news about the coronavirus. Okay, that's doing good. Great. probably doing it different than most bakers and they would probably say she does not know what she's doing but whatever sorry bakers I know the good thing about me is I at least I'll tell you you might tell me I don't know what I'm doing I'm like you're right you're awesome okay so now I'm just mixing the wet and the dry ingredients together and then I'll get the nuts and and then I'm going to add egg whites, which will be really interesting. I don't know if David did a bowl at least this size, maybe even bigger when his dad was around. David had like this banana bread recipe. He was like down pat because that's one of the things that his dad could still eat and he still enjoyed it. And like one of the things with his dad is, you know, his heart healthy. And so I think he used like whole, whole wheat flour, really kind of healthy banana bread. This is full of bananas, so that's good. And pretty soon it'll be full of nuts. All right, what do you guys say? Oh, that's not nice. Oh, Lottie. Lottie, Lottie, Lottie. I guess some people have nothing better to do with their time. Why do you go bake? If you don't have anything better to do with your time, you could bake like me. kind of mixing in the ingredients. Oh, this is quite the workout. Okay. Goodness, you too, huh? Thank you, Hippo. I'm glad they do have the ability to just ignore other ones. Sure. I'll do that. I'll let David know I did that. What's that? I modded New York ENT because 
I was having some people come into the chat room and just post some negative things. So, and I was taking breaks and banning people, but yeah, okay. But okay, this is looking like banana bread. I'm going to do my secret recipe thing, which might not necessarily work with this, but I'm still going to do it anyway, just because it's me and I like to do it, which is, I like to meringue my egg whites, kind of, or I like to make egg whites, fluffy egg whites. And then I'll add that to anything I'm baking and then and then I'll add the nuts but for this I'm wondering that's the only thing I'm wondering is do I add the nuts first or do I add the egg whites first and I'm thinking that I'm going to add the nuts first because you know I want them to cling and then if I because if I mix those in after the egg whites then it's not going to be it'll lose some of its fluff which is why I want the egg whites in there. So I got this big bag of walnuts. I I could I love walnuts. And I'm going to let's see. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put yeah, here we go. I'll put them in the Ziploc bag and then I'm going to like use a really cool hammer thing that David has a mallet to um, to kind of break them all up one of the things that a friend told me with walnuts is she said that walnuts actually start going rancid even on the shelf so I probably should rinse them off first. Just adding some of this butter in here. Cleaning out this. I'm making it dirty while I'm cleaning it out. Okay, Sarah. Should be cleaning it, but all right. Anyway, time to rinse it. No, I don't want it mod, mod me, please. It's a little tricky. You know, sometimes clicking, uh, actually typing it, the forward ban, and then, um, and then their name is sometimes easier than trying to, like, catch them when they're going through the room. You guys all just think David's watching. Is that why you all put the one? He might be. Hmm. I do quite a few nuts, so this is just the first round. Got some filtered water here, so I'm gonna kind of wash them off. I thought you were going to... Thank you. <sighs> I'm gonna get um, probably two more bags, two more cups like that. Three. 
think I did like four and a half cups of flour. So a good four cups of I'll take a three, four cups of nuts too. Oh, they had a one and an I both, I'm sure. Oh, I know, but I think it'll work out fine. Oh, part of it's the chat getting attacked and because they know I, I seem like I'm slow when I'm doing that. Well, he does a show every day, Rev Pete Davis. That's enough. What do you mean it's been so long? I was on the show last night. Is that enough nuts? Mm, one more. I like walnuts. That's almost like being my favorite part of the banana nut bread. All right, thanks, Cranky Beans. Oh, you guys reminded me I need to do some paperwork tonight. I won't be stepping on them, but I will be, I will be, uh, banging on them. got this cute little wooden mallet. It's super cute. And you can do the flat side or the mallet side. And what this does is just breaks up the nuts to make a little yummy, yummy bite size. she could just see you oh I can seal the top so they don't fly out pretty good. I almost wonder if I should do more, but I think that's all right. <laughs> Lucky, that's funny. delicious walnuts into the mash. Now oh, it's going to be looking good. Make sure to distribute them evenly. I don't know. They could used to have this like down to a science, but 
I guess it's pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Looking like what I remember. Two or three loaves. All right, now something we didn't do before, but I like to do it, is I'm going to take my egg whites. And use one of my favorite things. Which is okay, that's just weird. Thank you. All right, um, one of my favorite things is a whisk. for me when he got me a, a waffle maker. I think he gave me it to the same year. And I use my whisks to when I wake my waffles because I make really fluffy waffles. I haven't made them in a while. But and I've been home so you would think I'd make some fluffy waffles but I haven't. I love it so much I keep my little um, power cord protector on there. So I just want to keep it like it was when I got it. Mm. Let me flip this. Maybe it's that way. No, it's definitely the other way. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to whisk this up. Might have been that little bit of yolk that got in there, but no, actually starting. It's getting the air into it. I don't really, I'm not a fan of egg whites unless they go missed. Something about adding the air into it. the whisk because it takes something like so gross and slimy and just disgusting egg whites and it turns it into like this beautiful white fluffiness and that's how I like my eggs egg whites Exactly. I'm going to like take my eggs until they no longer look like eggs because I'm not really an egg fan. But yeah. I, yeah, it's kind of funny because like in, even in a hard boiled egg, I like the egg yolk, but I'm not a big fan of egg whites. But this is the one way I like egg whites is as a, like a meringue kind of thing. And if it were in, it makes more sense in a waffle because it's, this is really dense and thick. But I'm going to just do it. I do do it now or do I oil the pans first? Probably should oil the pans, bread pans. Let me just clean up a little bit. Really stack all this stuff that is seemingly everywhere right now. Gross. 
to do the dishes in a minute. All right, um, bread pans. Oh, David has the bread pans over here. Then they need oil. I'll go ahead and start the oven on too. You want me to spray those for you? Yeah, I was just about to do that. Okay. Or you can. I mean, sure. Yeah, I can do it. What you, which one should I use? Should I use those or these? What's easiest? I think all those glass ones are the best. They're the safest. And then we'll go to the Teflon ones if there's any extra. Okay. I don't really like cooking with Teflon, but they, they are sticky. Oh, shoot. So. Yeah. There it is. It came back. It's going to be the camera, the camera problem show. Okay, yeah, I'll just spray those out with a little bit of the sprayer. And I'm going to plastic it and kind of close it down. Did you get your uh, walnuts? Yeah, the walnuts are in there. Yeah. And see, I did something which is, I did this meringue type thing. Oh, wow. And I'm going to add that in. Yeah. So That's mostly egg whites are at the bottom, but be it's kind of egg whitey-ish. Anyway, yeah, I was telling him that's really the only way I like it. egg whites. Okay. Does a meringue. All right. It does make a, the taste much more delicate, I must admit. Oh, I didn't do any like cinnamon or nutmeg or anything. Oh, like yeah. That. We definitely need that. Yeah. I'll get you the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Let's go ahead and mix it right in. I think less nutmeg, of course, than cinnamon. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and use about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay. Okay. Put it right in there. Let's go ahead and mix all that in. And I'm gonna do a much less nutmeg because nutmeg is toxic if you put too much in. Just a little sprinkle of nutmeg just for flavor. Okay. That's about it. Some people put cloves, but I kind of like just a little touch of nutmeg and a little bit the touch of and a little bit more cinnamon. And cinnamon is good for lowering uh, your your diabetic uh, tendencies. They say cinnamon is a natural remedy, not a solution for diabetes, but it does limit the amount of sugar intake. Sugar is kind of like a bind, uh, cinnamon is kind of like a binder to sugar for our bodies. I don't know why. Similarly, a pepper, I understand, is a binder for turmeric. So, this is a little wet I don't now, have, no, I don't. But I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. It looks good. Okay, are you good? Did you spray them? I'm going to spray them right now. And I usually run the uh, fan, so let's do that. Get it going here. It does seem like it's fluffier. It was really dense, but yeah. you don't need to put any. Uh, one of the things I sometimes put in this is flaxseed meal. Oh, that's true. For more roughage, would you like to try a little flaxseed meal? In I there? don't know. Sure. Because that's one of the things I do for roughage. Whole wheat is good. You know, pastry flour is, is a little bit too fine, but finishing up here. Okay. Let me take a look and see if I have any of the meals today. Real quick. Jumping out of me, so. 
So I, I go Can ahead. Let me look really quick. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think we're good with the walnuts. The walnuts are good for roughage. Well, I can grind up some flaxseed meal. Spencer, you really are not having a good time being a shut-in, are you, man? A lot of you extroverts, I really feel for you. I'm I'm an ambivert. In between extrovert and introvert. Yeah, let's throw a little wheat bran in there. We got to get rid of that. It's it's old wheat bran. It's been around for a, about 80 years. It's yeah. The lid's loose. The lid's loose. Oh, great. Let me smell it. I just loosened it. I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm not sure. I, I would say no. 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 This will be for the last ditch, last food on earth kind of thing. Okay. So yeah, let's go with that. I'm good. I don't need the flaxseed meal right now. I don't want to grind it up. Yeah. I think we're good. Can I help you? Yeah, you can grab that. Like, have the other one ready to rotate under. Yeah, right now. Okay. There you go. You don't have to put a lot. It blows right up. It'll it'll fill right up. That's good. And the next one. Here we go. There we go. I think a little bit more in that first one too, if you have any extra. Yeah. That should do it. Yeah, four glass ones. That's all we need. Three. Three. Oh wow. Even better. Okay, three loaves of banana bread for the freezer. And that's exactly right, because I tripled the rest. Oh, lawnmower man, you, you can't really seriously belong here. Derek, anybody who says anything derogatory toward me? Like nutmeg? You're not doing the right amount of banning here. Anybody who starts harassing me, ban them. They'll, they'll come in. They're four chanters, man. They'll they'll hit you hard. If you're a novice at this, uh, just start banning anybody who says negative things about me or about anyone me. else or Sarah. Like Mr. McDonald, he's a four channeler. Anyone asking about my SAT scores, ban them. Anyone who doesn't look like a railer too. Yeah. Don't just don't say it like Kenny Hoats. That's a ban. No. Koran is slop. What is this four channel? That's a ban. <laughs> this is how to get ahead of these people. <laughs> or Bring just, it. Or just upset them so they go get all their friends to come in. No, they're getting paid. Nobody would be this stupid to not to do this and not get paid. I get so many people telling me, David, I've made millions off of your show, censoring you, attacking you. We got paid. And I, I'm, I'm shocked that people would pay people to attack me, but for 12 years, you can't stop me. So bring it. You're a crack smoker. Yep. And you were the guy, same crack smoker from last week. Yep. You guys are coming around all the time. Crack smokers central here. They don't have anywhere else to go. I guess so. It's, it's Especially when they're at home. I'm going to turn that fan off now. Thank you. Look at how nice those three loaves are, and we'll put them in the oven, and we'll have incredible banana bread. Yeah. So I'm thinking uh, Sarah's going to give you her time, and then we'll wrap this show up, and we'll put banana bread in the header here. Hang on. We did the $1 for two meals. I'll show you that in just a second. Banana walnut bread. We'll do a banana nut bread. Ooh, see? See what I mean? You got to grab that guy right away. There you go. You're getting there. You got to be quick on the trigger. Almost <laughs> was. So close. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you, by the way. I appreciate it. Yeah. The oven says, I'm ready. Okay. Where is Sarah? Put it back there. You can do one. Okay, so I'm gonna put them in the oven. I'll open the oven for you. Oh, I can see that with that Go ahead. Okay. 
Don't touch anything that way. I can touch it as long as I'm not touching it when it's coming out like this. I hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to go in there. How long? About an hour, would you say? Um, what does the 45 minutes. Say? One hour. And, Daryl, that's that's the, the guy that we won't allow you to post. I told you that a few times, Daryl. Yeah, don't post him ever. I don't want to be a reminder of that guy. He, sp he stalked us and bragged about all the money he made. Okay. Thank you. Well, this is awesome, Sarah. I'm going to show everybody the dinner that I just made. And you know, this is a really easy meal. You saw how quick I made it. It's beautiful. Sorry. And it actually tastes really good, believe it or not. Let's pull this out. Oh, sorry. Okay, I think we're wrapping up here anyway. Okay, I'm... Hey guys, welcome. Sarah's going to be in the show for a little bit. Uh, we're on a, a different mic now. Let me get the mic back in. I'll get the mic back in. Okay. Let me get this back up and running. Yeah, so you can have some time to, to talk to people if you want. Okay, we're back up and running on mic. Hey, everybody. So tell us about your experience with banana butt nut bread or whatever, and we'll kind of wrap this up uh, when you're ready to, to go. I'll, I'll hit the exit button and we'll close down. Oh. Okay, that was our start. That was a pretty good deal. Okay, that was our banana nut bread. And um, yeah, David used to make it all the time and we yeah. Yeah. were did a big shopping trip like two weeks ago or a week a week and a half ago. It was not this Tuesday but the Tuesday before and I'm like maybe we should get like three bunches of bananas because we eat them every morning. And we did and then David was I pulled it we David pulled it out yesterday, one of the extra bunches and he's like, Ah, uh, I think we're gonna have to make make some banana bread because these are not looking like they're going to stay very long. So we're going to be uh, using these for our eating the next couple days. You can still let them go. I mean, they're still good inside. You can eat them when they're almost black. I've had bad situations like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we'll make the banana bread. That'll be good because that'll last longer. Get the banana themselves. Okay. And, uh, Okay, I'm going to turn this light off over here. I have been in a, I was in a training session most of the day. It was a good session, but it was quite intense. Well, if you want to clean up in here, I'll, I'll start the show. I'm going to get my tie on, and I'll tell you okay when to switch off. I use the, this rag. Oh, yeah, as long as you're washing up. As long as you're not cooking with a dish rag, it's a dish rag is perfect. No, we're going to kind of, you can spend some time with Sarah. I'm going to go in the other room, get my tie on, and uh, get the show ready to go. Unemployment is screamingly uh, terrible right now. 3.3 .3 million and 6.6 .6 billion people unemployed. Oh, yeah. these people out of work. I'm so sorry. I never would have shut the country down, folks. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. Uh, you can maintain a steady plan. I support the Swedish model. And I don't mean some Swedish model who's posing, you know, in some, I don't know. know if I do. But I do, I and I've know. looked. I've looked at it. If you see the Swedish model, so far it's working great. It's much more sustainable long term, and it's got good forethought, long term vision. The Swedish people have, and I respect that. You cannot come in here and post. That's another bannable offense. Anybody posting a link is bad. New York EMT, and I'm going to be in the other room, and I'll clean up the room, and we're going to take your mods away at that time. Thank you, though. I mean, I know they they think that they're going to have like. The Swedish thinks they're going to have, um, you know, like, people just, they realize people will eventually get sick. But maybe, maybe that's the thing. Maybe they know that they have enough hospitals and they're medical sick. care yeah. to take care of their populace. So maybe that's why they're not worried. They're also aware that the cycle, if, if even if we were to get rid of the virus, logically, no, not greasy. Uh, even if we were to get rid of the virus logically, we're still going to have some out there, which means that even if we, at that time we go back to a normal life, it's going to spread then too. So why are we stopping our normal life? 
That's the point. You're never going to eradicate this virus completely. So why are we stopping our normal life? Why do we integrate it into our life? Well, and I that would, makes more sense long term for our country because obviously the economy could stall and food shortages occur and then you've got civil unrest. Yeah. So our president is not making good decisions right now. I can see 21 days. I agreed with 21 days and, and wait to see where the hump goes. But if they see real cases of people dying, I need to see bodies. I need to see the proof. Well, I, I can't just accept some CDC number that they pull out of some nursing home of people dying anyway. So, I have seen people saying that they're ill. Yeah, but I need real proof that people really are dying if I'm going to think, oh, we're going to close the country down for more than two weeks or three weeks? Come on. Now, why is Donald Trump allowing people to come in right now? And we've tracked their planes on flightradar24.com. You can check it yourself. This is insane. Why would we be letting people infected into our country when we're all hiding in our houses? Come on. Use logic here, people. Well, one thing that this has shown is that we definitely need a more robust medical system because obviously we do not have the medical system in place to care for our whole populace. That's that's um that's one of the big issues, you know, that they've said is the mainstream media, I know, I know a lot of you don't give that much credence, but is to, so it, yes, this will go through, and yes, it may affect a lot of people, but it's also about the whole issues to slow the rate of, of it affecting everyone, so that it doesn't put a huge strain all at once on our healthcare system, but of course, you know, that it does obviously then show weaknesses in our medical system. So that's, uh, that's something. You work in the security field and you have to work even if the state, if the state you live in closes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm working from home telecommuting. At first they were saying the telecommuting was looking a little bit different, but more like you could use do professional development like training. Teachers are often always doing extended training, so that's kind of what I was doing at first. And then now um, Who cares about slowing the rate if you're all socially dead? Well, I obviously you and I aren't socially dead. We're communicating. We're social. But if you're in debt and your wife leaves you because she's fed up with the routine and the kids run away, that's, you know, you might be right. That could happen. Could happen. Could end up being, you know, could end up having people rethink their life and think about making sure they live the life that they want. Definitely. I you think know? we're all adjusting and I think that's a great thing. I, I just, I question the logic behind this model. The Swedish model to me makes most the most sense of all. And I've, I've looked at it long term and the damage to our economy if we do a risk assessment is so great that it exceeds anything we could ever experience even in the worst case scenario, three to 5% of a kill rate. Now, if China and Russia are lying about the statistics, that's another story. But if we take their word for it, then this is a manageable flu. And according to Dr. Fauci himself, six days ago or five days ago, he wrote in the Harvard Medical, New England Journal of Medicine that it, it's no worse than a severe flu. And we read, read it ourselves. So. I really think we have to reassess the damage to the economy and to all of our personal rights. Now, with William Barr jumping on board this, wanting to get rid of our rights and suspend our Constitution, I would think all of you would be up in arms right now. But I'm glad you're not, because we have to take this sensibly. We can't possibly encourage that type of behavior. Yeah, I would definitely say yeah. encourage sensibility is sensibility. very good. Proceed sensibly, and in the next six weeks, if things don't get better, 
then we just simply have to start our economy up. It's that simple. We have no other choice. I think also our economy might adjust. Well, that was what I meant by keep having people still work uh, from their homes, but too many people are out of work now, and they we're absorbing too much of loss. And you know, there's lines of people in the Mid East, Pennsylvania. We saw lines. I'll show you in a few minutes of lines of people that are just waiting to get food at the food bank. We're talking three miles of cars parked, willing to idle and burn gas just to get food, folks. I mean, our country is screwed up right now. Do you want to stop this so you can go start the other show or something? Yeah, we're going to kind of roll this out. So your final words? Um, take care of yourself, be safe, be well, and be happy. All right. Same here, folks. And try to not get too too bent out of shape, and we're glad we can provide a 14-hour show for all of you. Thank you. Take care.